Here's one quote that caught our attention. Concern about fatigue cracking in the deck truss is heightened by lack of redundancy in the main truss system. Only two planes of the main trusses support the eight lanes of traffic. The truss is determined and the joints are theoretically pinned. Therefore, if one member were severed by a fatigue crack, that plane of the main truss would theoretically collapse. Now, at this point, we don't know if steps were taken to address those concerns. However, tonight, Governor Pawlenty said the bridge passed inspections in 2005 and 2006, and no doubt that we're going to continue to investigate that in the coming hours and the coming days. Joining us now on the phone is uh, Moes. Moa Sani, who has designed several bridges and now teaches at the University of Arizona, he warns the dangers of aging infrastructure across the country. Moa, as you look at, at the pictures that we have been looking at now for these last several hours, what, what strikes you? Well, um, Anderson, you know, structural engineers, we, we usually design buildings so that if they are going to fail, they would fail in a mode that we call a ductile mode of failure. And basically, in that mode, the members would sag and deflect a lot so that they would give plenty of warning before the failure. And um, unfortunately, the way these pictures, at least I don't want to judge, uh, rush to the judgment, but basically from you know, the, the pictures that I can see, it seems like this was a brittle failure, which uh, could in fact be, uh, you know, as that report that you just mentioned from University of Minnesota, in fact, if it was a uh, hinge or bolt failure, that type of failure is brittle, so it doesn't really give much warning and basically your structural members uh, snap into pieces. What is there, what is the precipitating event that would make it snap? I mean, is it one single event or is it something just over the course no, of time? I, no, in fact, unfortunately, these fatigue cracks, you know, if you have a uh, structural member or like a, a bolt or a beam of a bridge, even if, even if the stresses are very low, but if you have over the life of the structure, when you subject that element to millions of cycles of very low levels of stress, then you could develop a failure as a result of fatigue. And, and that may be a cause of this. You know, I, I think also something that might be of interest to your viewers is that um, not long ago, the Federal Highway Administration prepared a report uh, that was submitted to the U.S. Congress on the status of the nation's uh, infrastructure, and in particular bridges on the federal uh, on the interstate highway system. And according to this report, uh, nearly 70% of the bridges in our roadways are either uh, structurally deficient or obsolete. And so uh, we really, uh, you know, as a, the interstate system was, uh, for the most part, was constructed some 50 plus years ago. And unfortunately, uh, you know, we have not paid enough attention to the maintenance of these structures. So now we are getting to a point where um, you know, we might be seeing uh, failures like this more often, unfortunately. If you could just repeat that, 70% uh, of, of the bridges yes, in the United uh, States? Nearly 70% of the bridges are either structurally deficient or obsolete. Of course, not all, you know, the, the way they have categorized this, this does not necessarily mean that they are particularly unsafe, but some of them could be due to misalignment of the roadway or the fact that they have to be widened. But a large number of them are also... Um, you know, they have weaknesses. For example, you know, corrosion of uh, structural steel is a major problem in whether in steel or concrete structures. And uh, if you recall, it wasn't long ago, about a year or so ago, that a bridge collapsed in, uh, in Canada also because of the same type of, you know, corrosion and, and failure of the how long does it take? How long does it take to investigate a, a, something, a collapse like this to tr truly understand what it was that caused it? Oh, I, I would guess that it would probably take a good, uh, in, in the order of months, frankly, to, to look at this thing. And, and it all depends, actually, it would depend on uh, the records that they have on file, uh, which luckily it seems like in the case of this bridge, there have been some recent inspections in the last couple of years. So those would be very helpful in determining uh, at least some stage, uh, the status of the bridge, perhaps there are. Uh, pictures and other types of uh, non-destructive testings that engineers perform, uh, depending on what type of uh, database they have had on that bridge, you know, it, it could take um, a few months to come up with a definitive conclusion. We, we've heard from uh, rescue officials, fire officials in Minneapolis that, that they've, they're pulling people, they've pulled people off the bridge, that there are void spaces that they still need to explore, but it's simply at this point too dangerous. Uh, I talked to, uh, to uh, someone from the emergency management office who said that they have engineers on the scene who are trying to examine what remains of the bridge to see if it is, if and when it's going to be safe enough for 
workers to, to go back on the bridge and try to search for any other people who may still be trapped uh, somewhere in, in the wreckage. What, what do they look for? What, what kind of stresses are they now searching for on that bridge? I think, you know, most likely at this stage when they're trying to rescue these, um, if anybody who's trapped, most likely they're looking at uh, the safety of the rescuers rather than, you know, those who, who might have been trapped there. So they want to make sure that um, the structures or the pieces of bridge are, are stable as, as the rescuers try to go under those sections and pull people and, you know, out. Um, I, I want to put back on the screen this, uh, this excerpt from this report of 2001 uh, because it's very confusing. I, I frankly don't understand some of, of the, the language and if I could read it to you and maybe have you explain uh, what, it, what exactly it means uh, in sort of layman's terms. Let's try to put that uh, on the screen. We're still uh, obviously working on getting that, uh, showing you some of the images. These images, of course, were taken uh, several hours ago. Um, while there was still light, it is simply pitch black. At this point, they have brought in lights to try to illuminate the area, uh, but they are spotty at, at best. Um, you know, Anderson, while we're waiting for it, I can tell you that, uh, okay, the, here, the... Um, yeah, it's, well, uh, it, this is from the Minnesota. Uh, this is from the University of Minnesota Engineering Department in 2001. It says the approach spans have exhibited several fatigue problems, primarily due to unanticipated out-of-plane distortion of the girders. Although fatigue cracking has not occurred in the truss deck, it has many poor fatigue details on the main truss and floor truss system. Concern about fatigue cracking the deck truss is heightened by a lack of. Um, Assessment in this report shows that fatigue cracking of the deck truss is not likely. Therefore, replacement of this bridge and the associated very high cost may be deferred. Uh, well, um, the point about, for example, um, it, it seems like maybe they, they, they have observed that uh, some of the members were twisted a little bit, which is unusual. Usually, the, the beams which are under the floor of the bridge that we drive on, they are supposed to just... Uh, bend primarily, but if they're subjected to twist, as they were indicating in this report, that's, that's a cause of concern. And although um, it, you didn't show it now, but I know that uh, when you were showing some experts of this uh, report uh, a while ago, there was a mention of lack of redundancy. And I, yeah, I actually, let, 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 me, let me just read that part out because I was reading a different part. Uh, this is from page 13 of the report. Concern about fatigue cracking in the deck truss is heightened by lack of redundancy in the main truss system. Only two planes of the main trusses support the eight lanes of traffic. The truss is determinate and the joints are theoretically pinned. Therefore, if one member were severe, severed by a fatigue crack, that plane of the main truss would theoretically collapse. Yes, exactly, and that, that, is a, uh, uh, that is not a good design. The way most you know, engineers, the way we design buildings and bridges is that we put redundancies in there, which basically means that if one support were to give and fail, the loads would have a different path. They would be distributed to other supports and then finally find their way to the foundation, and the structure actually would be able to stay up even after one of the supports has failed. Now, um, if, if you do not have any redundancy, as this report indicates, then uh, their concern is quite valid that if you have um, you know, a couple of failures, then there is no other way for the load to kind of make its way to the foundation, and therefore you would have a collapse of the truss or, or, or the bridge. Hmm. Um, and then uh, they also indicate that some of these connections or these pins and hinges in, within the bridge, they may have suffered some crack, um, or, or some cracking or some damage due to fatigue, which uh, would obviously, if that, and I don't want to judge, you know, rush to the judgment again, but, but, but if those were the case, if that, that, if that were the case, then clearly those would uh, be some reasons for this type of failure. But the fact that the, the bridge was undergoing redecking work, is that just, you think, a coincidence, or could that possibly have some sort of impact on the structure? Uh, no, I think that might be a coincidence. You know, although the, you know, uh, sometimes when you, um, uh, you know, um, it, it doesn't seem in this case at least. You know, they were just resurfacing the bridge, but um, perhaps you know, if they had removed a certain part of the concrete deck totally, that might have contributed to this. But usually, resurfacing um, it, bridges are oftentimes they're designed with a wearing surface that every several years, once that wearing surface is worn out, then they would put another 
surface on top of that. So it should not really, the, the weight of that wearing surface is uh, always included in the design of the bridge. So I don't think that that wearing surface by itself, at least as far as the weight of it goes, uh, should have caused this type of problem. Obviously, there's a lot of questions to be uh, still to be answered. Uh, Moasani, we appreciate your expertise. Thank you very much. All of this happened on a crowded bridge in a major American city, and chances are hundreds, if not thousands, of people saw something of what happened. Some of them were close enough. We expect they'll carry the images with them for the rest of their lives. Here are some of the stories that are now just coming to light. I got a call from my fiance. We were watching a movie back at our house, and she said that... Uh, her cousin was on the phone with her, and she said that the uh, that the bridge was collapsing she was on, and she had to go, and we can't get a hold of her anymore, and we're just trying to find out if she's okay or, or what's going on, but 